nations, you know, they'll be one of the favourites and uh, they are capable of beating anybody on their day. So, uh, you know, it'll be a, an interesting Five Nations for them, you know, whether they build to the World Cup or they try and, uh, you know, establish the, the, with the side that they have now. OK, Jonathan, thanks. The formality is just about to begin at Lansdowne Road. Well, we'll have time to uh, explore the events of the first 40 minutes with Gavin Hastings, with Dennis Hickey, Jonathan Davis at half time. But now for this first match in the Lloyds TSB Five Nations Championship, let's join our commentary team at Lansdowne Road, Philip Matthews and Nigel Starmer Smith. Welcome to a wet and windy Lansdowne Road, but it's boiling here in the hearts as Ireland's president, Mary McAleese, is presented to the French team. Well, it's uh, the last game, as Steve said earlier, of the Lloyds TSB Five Nations Championship in place since 1910, but it'll now be superseded by a Six Nations competition as Italy join in next year. And here, Ireland face these men, the double Grand Slam champions, Ireland bidding for a first victory over France for 16 years. Expectancy and optimism buoyed up, not least by the happenings here last weekend when Ulster won the European Cup. Extraordinary scenes as the whole stadium was on its feet applauding for the last five minutes knowing victory was assured the officials of the day and it will be paddy johns to introduce ireland's team there have been some extraordinary goings on over here no murphy there the irish rugby football union president just behind the president of the republic i mentioned extraordinary goings on yesterday ireland a beat france for the first time since 1975 and ireland's under 21 beat france under 21 for the first time ever so can this senior side complete a remarkable treble by beating France at senior level for the first time since 83? And one man who hopes for sure that they will do so is alongside me, Phil Matthews. Phil, is this to be uh, the parting of the ways, if you like, and the start of something new in Irish rugby? Well, Nigel, I think we're certainly due a, a win today, considering it's at 1983 since we last beat France. Yeah, I've been putting my neck out in a bit of a limb so far this week. I, I'm fully expecting an Irish win today, and I certainly think that the team should be fully expecting to win. Uh, I think Ulster have raised the expectations, the standards, the levels of expectations throughout Ireland over their exploits over the last few weeks, and it's, it's not insignificant, as you mentioned already, that the junior sides both won. Uh, leading up to this game and that's certainly going to add to the, the, the air of confidence within the camp at the moment. Well you can see the umbrella held high, it's a, a wet afternoon but I suppose in the past we'd have said that's a big advantage to Ireland, no more I guess in the modern game, it's as disadvantageous to Ireland as to anybody. I think that's right because uh, I think if the modern rules uh, in rugby dictate that you've got to do something with the ball and, and that Ireland certainly today are going to have to attack just as the way Ulster did uh, and be constructive. Um, and likewise, France, so, you know, the conditions are going to be, I think, going to be even for both sides. So, as the president leaves to take her seat in the stand, there's a, a youngster, a big day for Brian Silk. He's just nine from Cashel in County Tipperary, and he's the mascot for the day. What a wonderful contrast alongside Paddy Johns he makes, this youngster, a great moment for him. And... Paddy Johns is one of his own favourite players appropriately. So the teams stand, the tension mounts, the stands fill in eager anticipation of a great opening day to the Five Nations Championship. And the players wait, nerve-wracking moments these for player and spectator alike as we listen now to La Marseillaise.
she goes fly high for the reigning Grand Slam champions of the last two years. A further anthem to be played. Some raw. And finally, the theme tune of Irish rugby, Ireland's Call. Standing tall, shoulder to shoulder, the inspiration again of Lansdowne Road at full voice. And so France with a pack retained in its entirety from last season. A late call up though was Benetton from Marc de Evremont. And Ireland's team, which we see first, a wave of confidence highlighted by that Ulster triumph. Bringing in the Ulster captain David Humphreys as fly half, goal kicker, launcher of Gary Owens. The man they hope will launch the brilliant O'Shea and the newcomers to the Five Nations, London Irish partner, the winger Justin Bishop, Terrenures, Gervin Dempsey. Jeremy Davidson, now of Cast, returns after missing all last season. And Andy Ward is replaced by Eric Miller, who gets his recall. A pack that will rise to the occasion, but have they the try scorers as well? And here, France. Benetton, the late call-up for Marc Nievremont. He was a replacement, though, in three of the games last season. Same half-backs, too. The general at scrum half, Philippe Carbonneau. The catalyst, Castagnier at fly half. Bit of a question mark about his fitness, and so too Emil and Tamak, who's now at full-back for the first time in the Five Nations. Bruze and Ibanez, the captain, doubtful starters. That apart, it's hard to see a flaw. And it will be in this swirling breeze, the referee, Peter Marshall, his first visit to Lansdowne Road, his 17th test match, and this is Thomas Castagnier to set underway the Five Nations 99. And already a very good opening take. And set back by Costello, but immediately a penalty as Ireland stay on top and don't get away, and that's uh, an early setback. An early setback, and Victor Costello just becoming a little bit exposed, a bit of uncertainty in that kickoff. It was, it was strange the way Castagnier placed it. It was, it was almost in no man's land. The call from Costello was late, and indeed the, the rest of his forwards didn't respond quick enough. He got isolated, and, and looks like he held on too long. And uh, as an injury receives attention, it's just tucked into touch, as so often happens now. And quickly back on his feet is uh, Olivier Magne. On that standing player, he was tremendous mobility, the uh, open side flanker. Castaned then with the touch for France, about 15 metres out, the throw in by Ibanez, the captain, and it's uh, nicely wrapped up at the front by Fabien Pelou. France drive, 10 metres out, in the traditional uh, mid blue shirts. The tackle as Lombard comes in from the left wing. Newcomer he, taken on by Pelouse again. Pelouse, five metres out, danger here already, but the loose ball well picked up. Costello breaks away. The Roars of relief from the crowd, and Humphreys in the uh, scrum cap clears well. 
Oh, that's a superb opening salvo from David Humphreys. And a tremendous confidence booster because things were looking a little bit dangerous there. France were in danger and getting onto the, the, the good start that they really want to get off to today, but Victor Costello recovered it. But we have, as we look at David Humphreys, an injury to Thomas Lombard, the new man on the wing, bringing just his third cap today. He looks as though he may have pulled a hamstring as he came in off the left flank. He's obviously uh, in some pain here. Let's see if we can tell how it happened. There's the incident, and it must have been in that moment as France continued threateningly under the post. Fabien Palou. And it was a good piece of rescue, perhaps a little carelessness on... Uh, France's part that allowed the ball to go loose and Costello to save the day, Humphreys to clear. So attention still for Thomas Lombard as the line-out forms. There's Peter Cloisy playing his best rugby ever in his 24th international today. Young Munster, but uh, perhaps a, a little bit of a euphemism. He's 32 now, is Cloisy. And there's the magic spray going on in great amounts. The line-out is not won cleanly. And France take it through Castagnier, the short, sharp pass. Dort is downed on France's 10-metre line. Flicked away. That's pretty emphatic by Magne. Good link. Out now to Lievremont, Thomas Lievremont. Thus two tackles, just outside the 22. Carboneau in possession, but this time it's straight down and over the top, says uh, Peter Marshall. The Australian referee from Sydney. And the relief of the clearance penalty for Ireland. Temporary relief for Ireland with the, with the line-out to come, Nigel. But it, it, just, it looks like France have been very, very clear about their objectives at the moment. They're taking the game right to Ireland and they're managing to break the game line. Ireland are going to certainly have to stiffen up and shore up this defence. A very direct style here. Carboneau with the uh, scrum cap. It's becoming quite a, a pattern these days. The setup there by Lievremont. From the line out now, it's McGuinness to Humphreys. A little loop move in the middle. Miller drives on over the 10 metre line. That's good ground gained. McGuinness. Keith Wood, as ever, stands off. Costello takes on. Good linking, good support play, but uh, almost intercepted by Carboneau. He's offside. Penalty Ireland. And a good piece of constructive play from Ireland there. Interesting to see what Ireland have picked a very, very constructive back row with, with both Aquinagon and Miller and Costello all very strong on the ball. The interesting link is going to be McGuinness at scrum half and that, that, that middle five, uh, including Humphreys as well. Can McGuinness serve Humphreys today and can he get his box cricks in the right area, which has been a little bit of a weakness in the past? Well, all he needs to do is replicate his form in Stade de France last year when he had an outstanding game against the French Ireland losing your call in the last minutes by the narrowest margin of 1816. So here a chance, an important psychological moment for David Humphreys. Can he give Ireland the lead after just six minutes? No, you could hear from the crowd immediately, he hooked it slightly. Disappointment for David Humphreys, the Ulster captain. We called today. His eight penalty goals in his Irish career of 11 games up till today. But it's a big responsibility he takes on. Castagnier goes long, Humphreys takes. The link now with Justin Bishop, his first Five Nations appearance. And this is Conor O'Shea who can counter-attack with the best of them. Well worked back. McGuinness, Humphreys doesn't hold it, didn't knock on. Keith Wood the link. Back goes Classy. Hit on the retreat, Ireland here, but safely with McGuinness. Humphreys puts up the first of the high balls of the day. Across comes Ben Assal. In goes Bell. Knock on advantage, Ireland. Nana Cruz. So the first one told. Excellently, excellently executed. If that's not uh, too much of a repeat, but certainly the right decision there. No doubt about what the thing was, what the right thing to do was, and. Um, and Humphreys made the right decision, well followed up by Bell, and we need to see more of that, we need to get this Irish, Ireland certainly need to get this Irish crowd going, get a bit of noise into this game, it's old, it's a little bit too flat at the moment. And you can see the, uh, the paint, or whatever they use on these uh, advertising markings, is coming off on the players, there's the man who put in that superb tackle of a finely placed Gary Owen there from 
David Humphreys. There's Bell, just uh, caused the hassle and panic for Bernard Sal and the knock-on. We'll wait because uh, Keith Wood has taken a knock. Here's a man who uh, epitomises Irish fervour. Previous captain had his uh, little contretemps with the Irish Rugby Football Union, but happily restored and very much a crowd favourite here at Lansdowne Road. As much as at uh, the Stoop Memorial Ground, his club Harlequins. There's the halfway line. There's the blue paint. Well, it's certainly the right colour for the French. But uh, I'm sure the players would be wonderfully happy about it all. Scrummage put in again then with uh, Conor McGuinness. And it collapses to give Ireland a penalty. Referee Marshall says that France were not going in straight. They were pushing at an angle. Tourner Califano. <laughs> this is uh, really a bit beyond a joke, I guess. <laughs> I mean, uh, I just hope it doesn't go in the player's eyes. Well, if, uh, if the referee's awarding penalties, he's certainly got to be, not going to be able to say penalty blue in a little while, because that's going to be very confusing. <laughs> well, well. So the die is uh, coming off. And the town's already out. Uh, both teams being uh, cleaned off. And blue hair by the end, apart from Humphreys here, who takes the kick. He struck that sweetly, but just wide of the right hand upright. And these really are chances that, that, that Ireland and David Humphreys must take. Uh, the game is very much in the balance at the moment, but with France, because they can strike so quickly, Ireland need to get points ahead. There's two early opportunities have gone by the board. Castagnier again opts for the long dropout. Humphreys covers it and sets off Conor O'Shea. <laughs> Playing so outstandingly at the moment with the... Uh, London Irish side very much their inspiration as well as their captain that's on the halfway Ireland have dug it out Wood the little uh, kick and chase Lombard restored he's fit again clearly held midfield on the 10 metre line France's side Carboneau this time to the back row of Magne inside to Castagnier who's Downed emphatically there, and I think it was McGuinness who put the tackle in. France possession imminent. Carboneau of Breve. And that's rolled into touch. Knock on first, though. Justin Bishop, winning his sixth cap today, another of the London Irish contingent, his first Five Nations appearance. France put into the scrum. Bit of attention, meanwhile, for Eric Miller. Packs down now. France have it. Carboneau. Castagnier. Dort. Solid midfield tackling again. And it was Bell once more, creating havoc in French ranks. Knock on though was against Ireland in this instance but once more how quickly the Irish midfield are up on their counterparts well that was a particularly good Irish scrum as well the Irish scrum just got that half bit of a wheel and made it very very difficult for the French back row to control that ball which, which helped the midfield defence midfield they are now Carboneau Bernard Sal coming in from wide this is ringing the changes Emil and Tamak out wide but a knock on yeah, the knock-on force by that aggressive pressure defence by Ireland, that's something that Ulster did very, very successful against the French sides they played against. Getting right up man-on-man, -man, closing down those spaces. Back as full-back. His last test was against Ireland in 97 in the Five Nations. Emil Ntamak, a flyer and a great counter-attacking full-back in prospect. Costello. Guinness Wood top of the kick again I think this time more directly into the opposition Humphreys floated too long 
out on the full. Last appearance in the Five Nations was against Scotland before Eric Elwood resumed. And rather in the days as with Ollie Campbell and Tony Ward, uh, different views, different supporters of uh, Elwood and Humphreys. We both are for a lot, but uh, somewhat different ways. Elwood, the, the more conventional, the, the less instinctive player. Humphreys, his job really to try and uh, set away his three-quarter line. Good close work, Olivier Magne from Lievremont. Carboneau. Castagnier, damage to Dort, into Lombard, clung to by O'Quinnigan. Carboneau again, and Castagnier. Beyond the reaches of O'Shea, cleverly placed. Educated boot, that one. Castagnier had all the time. It was a well-worked move, bringing Lombard in from the blind side, and that's what the French are, very, are always very, very capable of doing. They, they got beyond the game line, gave Castagnier all the time in the world to pick his, to pick his spot. Unlike the time that Humphreys had previously and, and, uh, and just putting him on the full. Ireland's throw, they've... Uh, Paddy Johns, the front jumper. Davidson in the middle. Up goes Johns in the scrum cap. Paddy Johns, the captain of Ireland. That's a useful ball. Bernard Salle with enough time, though, to check and attack. Sets it to Pelouz. Magna now. Carboneau goes himself. Almost using the referee as a decoy. But it's well won back by Ireland's pack. Humphreys from inside the 22. Got good weight on the ball. Across comes and Tamak. Back goes Lumbar. Up comes Bishop. And that's good pressure from the newcomer. Helped to make that into a very valuable kick. It's almost as if you can see some of these little Ulster combinations working well. Bishop really came up on the full, uh, being an Ulster man himself, uh, and, and responded well to Humphrey's kick. But the, previously, the, uh, the box kick from McGuinness led to a very good counter-attack opportunity for France, and that's what Connor must focus on today. He's got to get more height into his box kicks, because the last thing you want to do is give the ball to Bernasal and then to Mac with, with any space. So we have a problem with Bell receiving attention. He's taken a knock on the head. And whether this is temporary replacement, I'm not sure. On comes Rob Henderson, who will relish his chance. His last was against uh, South Africa in the summer tour by Ireland. So he wins his eighth cap now in the centre with Bell off. Very similar style of player, very direct, very forthright. So no shortcomings there. Ireland advance. McGuinness, Humphreys. Pumps one up high, it's a good one, it's landing on Ntamak, and he's not equal to it, there's a knock-on anyway, and Ireland advantage being played. Ten metres out from the French line. That's just the sort of unnerving uh, moment that Ireland had hoped for. Beautiful Gary Owen from Humphreys. Yeah, that was wonderfully executed, Gary Owen from David Humphreys. He just sat back in the pocket, Played it a little across the field, and Entomac, obviously having expected this all day, didn't relish, didn't relish the, his first Gary Owen and knocked it on with, with what was fairly little pressure. A player who hates to kick, he played against Italy in that uh, French 15 last week and uh, never kicked the ball once in his new position as fullback. And that's very much the Entomac style. But the defensive role clearly question marks arising already. The boots come off. Well, we're going to have uh, multi-colours, that's for sure, before this one's through. Uh, Davidson restored. Well, who'd have thought we'd see Ireland playing in red, white and blue, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Off goes Costello, taking on the littlest man in Castagnier, drives towards the post, six metres out. From McGuinness, on goes Clarcy. Still loose, nice pop-back pass from McGuinness to Humphreys. O'Quinnigan, good defence by France, they've rocked them back a bit and they've won possession. Franck Comba, super clearance. That's a very good pressure kick. 
and Ireland unable to capitalise on the momentum. Frank Comba of Stade Francais, the old conquering Stade Francais, who's come in to replace players like Stéphane Gla and Christophe Lamaison, what depths they've got. But very much a surprise selection, Comba, in my book, with uh, his inability to retain a first-team place with his club because uh, there's a New Zealander called Cliff Mitten who keeps him out normally. So a bold selection by Skrela and Villepreux. You just sense that Ireland needs, well, you more than sense, Ireland must, should really have come away from that with uh, with at least three points. That's one thing that Ulster did very, very well over the past three games, was any time that they made chances for themselves, they took them, and Ireland would have to start taking some of these chances and put some distance between themselves and France. You saw the triumvirate there of uh, Danaher, assistant coach Warren Gatland, Donald Lenehan. Lennon, who was part of the last Irish team to beat France, that was back in 83, in Dublin here. The days of Slattery and Moskeen, Philor, Fitzgerald. And Davidson gets his footwork in order. Keith Wood prepares with the throw. It's going deep. Works well with Miller. And this is the direct Rob Henderson. McGuinness, Humphreys, lots of space there, cross comes and Tamak, hoping it will go over the goal line, and it does. Still with France. Cabano de Lombard. Plenty of Irish cover. And there's offside by Ireland. Closey. Closey protests, but uh, the ball hadn't come out. Paddy Johns just exchanging pleasantries with his opposite member. Very much in the Willie John McBride mould, the leader by example, Paddy. Yes, he certainly doesn't hang back. He has been quite confrontational. In fact, if anything, since he's taken over the captaincy, I think that there's been a more confrontational side to, to Paddy Jones's game. But unquestionably, is, is the support of the rest of this pack, and I think is uh, he's really an inspirational in terms of leading from the front, which is, is probably the ideal place to be. It was all about the French wiles and guiles. This is seventh international against them. Castagnier now with Comba. The number eight is Lievremont. Crowd appealing for a knock-on, but the referee says no way. But Ireland were the side edging forward, and they've won the put-in. Kevin Maggs put in a big tackle then. And that won't be a weakness, the midfield defence of Ireland, I'm sure. Yes, the, the first up defence, Nigel, is holding up fairly well because certainly France are trying to draw space by using bringing in the blindside wingers, and they're not they're not getting too much joy out of it. But I, I do worry that Ireland certainly need to start being more more, more constructive themselves and, and creating some chances themselves because they would have expected to be further ahead at this stage, certainly with the chances they've had. Yep, we've uh, played uh, the first quarter and there's still no score. This is O'Shea downed by Philippe Benetton. And he was called up yesterday to replace Marc Lievremont. Humphreys, whoops, man and ball there for Rob Henderson, who won't thank Humphreys for that too much. Traditional red cross pass, and this is where France can capitalise. Comba goes wide to Bernard Sal. The flyer from Biarritz. Play on, says the referee. O'Shea does. Ireland a bit slow to... Uh, Recover position. McGuinness puts up a very useful box kick again, though. Then Asal underneath. Stops it inside, though. And O'Shea's a bit slow to get to his feet. He's struggling a little at the back. And Castagnier, I think, meant to angle that more deeper. Up comes Lombard to tackle the covering Bishop. O'Quinnigan. 
Bit of a mad panic for the ball, it finally eludes the hands of Eric Miller. First throw forward was by France. Ireland's had the scrummage put in. And there's clearly a worry about Conor O'Shea. You can just see him there being escorted. But he's uh, not going to risk leaving the field at this moment in time. A bit scrappy the last few minutes. But remember, it is uh, a greasy ball, a, a wet, windy day, not helping in any way. And attention required also for, is it classy? And the referee, of course, will wait with a front row man injured. Yes, it's Ireland at the moment. David Humphrey's trying to be very constructive and certainly trying to move the ball a little bit more into space and bring his midfield into play. But um, it's almost as if because he's got more options, uh, that, that distinct game plan that he's been used to playing with, uh, with, his, with the Ulster side, he's got more options now and needs to be a little bit more discerning, with more decisions to make he, because he's got more options. I think Ireland maybe just needs to be a little bit more direct, get the ball in the air, and again, Conor McGuinness needs to keep his, his box kicks with a little bit more height. If you've just joined us, we're live at Lansdowne Road, 24 minutes played of this first half. No score to either side, Ireland having squandered two kickable penalty chances through David Humphreys. And very much uh, a war of attrition up front developing. That's Conor McGuinness, uh, Conor O'Shea. playing the best rugby of his life this season. Costello, Johns, cleanly set back. McGuinness to Humphreys. Up comes in Tamaki, won't relish this one either. It's good work by Henderson, Ireland in possession, inside the 22, and on they drive. France at sixes and sevens. Someone's lost the boot, it's not... Uh, McGuinness, Costello held, surrounded, enveloped even, but there's offside by France, now surely Ireland can get the three points here. Well, that, that was really what exactly what was needed. It was a superb Gary Owen from David Humphreys and very well followed up by Henderson. We just thought that that ball then needed to go very wide and that Victor Costello standing up close was not the place to be, but they certainly have a three-point opportunity and David Humphreys should be able to slot this one. Well, it was an excellent setup again, following the uh, great work by Humphreys. Costello was buried, but France were coming in from all angles. And Humphreys now has, well, an extra nerve-tingling moment, knowing the responsibilities of goal-kicking. Two misses. This would settle him and could well settle the Irish side. 26 minutes gone, and no mistake with the third one. And Humphreys gives Ireland the lead. Coming up to 26 minutes of this first half. Well, it's been a 26 minutes, and it's been a rather tentative 26 minutes, it has to be said, from both sides. France seems to be feeling the way, maybe of having expected a bigger onslaught than has actually been delivered so far, expecting a more, more concentration on the Gary Owens, which so far have produced both of Ireland's uh, concrete scoring opportunities. Uh, and let's hope that Ireland doesn't disappoint in that regard and what, what's left of this first half. Well, a reward at last for Ireland, nothing like points on the board to instill confidence. And there's been plenty in this Irish camp this week following on the dramatic affairs in the European Cup with Ulster in which they downed so many uh, French top clubs problem here though with a mistake by Conor O'Shea in front of the post it'll be a knock on and not the restart moment that Ireland would have wanted uh, again I stress a tricky ball we've had heavy drizzle the ground is wet on the surface the ball undoubtedly greasy the upshot a good attacking position platform for France in front of the post, 15 metres out, up from Lievremont. Little chip through by Carboneau, up comes Lombard, Bishop holds fairly and squarely. But it's come loose, France's way, but it was on the ground, hands in the ruck by France. 
And the relief again for Ireland. A big reaction from the French crowd, but I don't think there can be any argument with that one. Ireland had the ball well won, and nothing but a hand could have pulled that back. Well, the chant of Allez les Bleus, more than ever appropriate today, because they'll be blue all over before long. Safely away. So Ireland who put up a, a brave performance for so much of the match against South Africa in their last big international having earlier beaten Romania and Georgia. A major test win is what they need. And Warren Gatlin too, just 11 months in the coaching position. Good close quarter work. No, was it knocked on? It was. That was just a little bit careless. At the back of them all there. Slipped out of the hands of a Quinnigan, I think. So, Philippe Carboneau, Castanier. That's gone up to the heavens. Down it comes on O'Shea. Up comes Comba. Mark Cole safe. Quick for the counter attack chance. Comba tries to interfere. Referee would have played advantage. Doesn't need to now. O'Shea's made good ground. Ireland pack scurry, hurry. Lifted on now to O'Quinnigan. Inside to Henderson. Over the halfway, McGuinness to Humphreys. Good cover coming in from uh, Lievremont, but good tackling from Bishop and from Humphreys too across there. Still with France, Carboneau. Magne tried to catch it himself. All a bit harem scarum at the moment. Bit frenetic. It is a bit for many, but it's great to see Conor O'Shea and Ireland willing to run that back, and that's got to be part of the newfound confidence, particularly in Conor O'Shea's game, that he, he saw the opportunity and was prepared to take it. Here we can see the ruck developing Carboneau, looking to move the lovely little attempt, almost a la Keith Wood, but just fails to make the pick-up, and Mags back in, ball goes forward again. France's 10-metre line. Ireland 3, France 0. Still with Ireland. Paul Wallace with the setup. Johns, McGuinness, Humphreys. Oh, well, it almost worked like a, a dummy. Managed to cling to it. O'Quinnigan slips that tackle. Looks for support from Dempsey outside. Up to the 22. The crowd begin to lift Ireland here. On goes Humphreys, there's an injury, meanwhile, for Clercy. This is Henderson on the drive. So direct, so powerful. Bill could pick up, drop goal attempt by Humphreys. Scarce go off the ground. An anticlimactic end as Bernard Sal covers. And there wasn't really an awful lot of option for David Humphreys there. He could see that he, that he had Victor Costello and, uh, and, and not an awful lot else outside him. And the French cover just fanned across. And with the rest of Ireland's teams kind of scattered around the pitch, there is little else he could really do other than maybe find a, find a touch. So beginning to string the passes together, there's the direct physical approach of Rob Henderson. Very powerful upper body and the missed drop goal attempt. Half a minute, a uh, half an hour played. Just the one penalty goal for Humphreys. He's Ireland lead. On balance, they've had just the better of the play. Bishop looks for the counter attack. Mannion with the tackle. McGuinness to carry it on. Humphreys, oh, nice dummy, leaves Dort standing. And then it's well played from Max to back to uh, Davidson. Humphreys inside, Humphreys almost through himself. Feeds on to Dempsey. Ten metres out, it falls now to Davidson. Powerful hits coming in from the French defenders. Was he offside? Yes, he was. Ireland penalty. Well, that was a wonderful piece of movement by David Humphreys. If we get the playback, just look the way he pops, feeds, puts, puts O'Shea into space, and, but follows up again. Henderson has the ball, but it was Humphreys made the space and looked quick on the loop to follow up. Feeds it inside to Gervin Dempsey, who's held up. And the Irish support is quick there. Jeremy Davidson getting lifted back into McGuinness. 
But the French do well to get back in numbers and force Ireland again onto the back foot. I'll give away the penalty. The Lansdowne Road roar at full throttle now with Ireland, having just tapped the ball into touch, have the line out throw in six metres out. Wood to throw. Davidson in the middle. Ireland possession going around the short side. The drive to the corner by O'Quinnigan is just held up, bundled out by Bernard Sall. Well, O'Quinnigan is really very dangerous on the ball. It's got tremendous pace and strength. A little bit of a set to going on between Peter Clossy and Christian Califano. We can see it well from this angle. Came down off Davidson. A lovely little move. Costello the link. And look how close to that goal he was. So, it builds up just a bit of attention required. And Clarcy would do well not to bother to uh, trade words with Peter Marshall, the referee. And in fact... It's now a penalty to France. Now, was that for words or something else? It's hard to know from uh, here. I, I can only assume that Peter Clausey must have instigated a little bit of that, but you know that, that has been a, a boost to France's confidence, there's no question about that. They've come away from what was a very, very... looked like a critical defensive situation with, with, not, with, uh, with their line intact. From Thomas Castagnier. Had a shoulder operation last summer, has not really been fully fit this season but was successful in the recent Italy game came through that all right the man who was inspirational in the Francis Colors last season in the Grand Slam year Cabano Castagnier under pressure from O'Quinnigan safely to touch though but it's Ireland's throw in well, Quiggan has never failed to impress me. He's been tremendously quick and powerful on the ball. And really, when you look at Ireland's breakaway unit of Costello, Miller and Quinnigan, it's hard to, to imagine a, a more dynamic threesome uh, in the championship. Certainly as, as dynamic, at least, as the French three. Well, Quinnigan there supporting Costello at the back. The Quinnigan product of uh, Stellenbosch University, but with Irish parents. Humphreys, O'Shea, that one was spotted and closed down by Dort. It's gone loose, but France can't capitalise on it. And there's a bit of uh, fisticuffs going on on the floor. Plenty of tension out there and plenty too in the crowd. In such a close game, the drizzle persistent and heavy here at Lansdowne Road. Five and a half minutes of the first half to play. Ireland lead, a penalty goal by Humphreys to nil. Gone more than 90 degrees round. Peter Marshall maintaining firm control. Player who had charge of England's test against New Zealand last June. Penalty now, though, it's cut by France. And Ireland have a penalty head on to the post, 30 metres out. Yeah, as you can see, Paul Wallace nodding his head with some justification. He, he's obviously having a, a right old battle with um, with his opposite number, Christian Califano, and he's certainly, by the body language, he's, he's laying all the blame squarely on um, Califano's broad shoulders. Uh, Keith Wood getting in on the act. We can just hear the, the conversation with the referee, and he's, he certainly wants the, the referee to know that he feels that the France are pull, consistently trying to, to lower this scrum. And judging by the, the colour of Wood's head, he must... Uh, <laughs> you'd have to agree with him. So Humphreys, successful in his last one, can he make it 6-0? Cheer goes up, the flags go up, Ireland lead 6-0 with about four minutes to go of this first half, plus any injury time. So the best riposte to any fracas, any French guiles or misdemeanours is to put the points on the board and that's what Humphreys is now beginning to do. So a happy hunting ground for David Humphreys. This is proving to be in successive weeks. Captain of Ulster last week in the victory over Colomier. Victory that followed success over both Stade Francais and Toulouse and gave such newfound confidence to the Irish players. 
Yevremont. Switch with Palou. And Wood going in in pretty uncompromising fashion, in characteristic fashion, but legally. McGuinness to Humphreys. Tips another one to the skies. Up comes and Tamak, safe this time. Enveloped by Henderson, though, midfield, 28 metres out. And it'll be Francis put in. Retain possession after the kick, which, of course, means that the player doesn't necessarily have to form the ruck to, re to retain possession if he receives possession from the kick, as he did there. And Tomac safe that time. Carboneau receives it from Lievremont. Off. Oh. Well, that was pretty unequivocal. Miller, I think, that time. Just uh, snuffing out Castagnier. That's well gathered up by Philippe Benetton, one of the old hands in the side. 57th appearance today, the 30-year-old late replacement. Hands in the ruck by uh, Ireland this time on the halfway. Just a couple of minutes of normal time to play in this first half. Castagnier, it's been a fairly uncomfortable afternoon so far. He's had very little room in which to operate. He's been very much a target for Ireland's back row and midfield. A huge chant echoes around this massive stadium. Pelou wins possession for France. Carboneau just issuing instructions as the, the petit general he is. It's gone loose, so the pressure's on again. It was once more Henderson who created problems. On goes Humphreys. Was he tackled? Surely without the ball, Magna was the man to bring him down. And here's the penalty. Well, French sides know all about David Humphreys' pace uh, over the last couple of weeks. Ireland do well to recover that ball. And again, it was that up, up first front pressure, pressure defence of the midfield created the opportunity and Magna forced to take Humphreys down. He was obviously too confident winning that race for the ball. The era of the professional foul, he knew what he was doing, didn't he? All too well. Um, obviously felt that he would rather give away the three points opportunity and a, it has to be said there's an awful lot of that in the game at the moment. The rain falls. As Humphreys prepares. This for 9-0. Scuffed it as it drifted in, it stayed out. I think he took a bit of a uh, sod of the turf there at impact, and it was never on target. It stays 6 0, and we're exactly 40 minutes played in this first half. But as yet, no real pattern to this French game. They've been hounded and harried and made discomforted. Davidson taps down, but it falls squarely to France. Pelouf. Ireland strung across the field in defence. Over the top goes Paul Wallace. Stays on side, though. Lombard. No way through there. Costello making doubly sure. It's a tantalising opportunity that France France this season. No one's ever achieved three Grand Slams in a row, with two under their belt. But this is a tough opening encounter. Castagnier, the man who could turn the game though at any time. Finally caught. Carboneau, reverse pass to Pelou. And Castagnier on the receiving end once more, he's still on the deck and in some pain, but there's Ntamak following through. O'Shea did well to recoil and just capture his opposite number before he burst away. We know Ntamak's speed. 
And there's a tension still for Castagnier. And Ireland do enough to win the put into the scrum. A dangerous well, moment was saved. Very this dangerous man could have been home. Keith Wood must take an awful lot of credit there because I think he single-handedly was able to win that ball back. He was there with about three or four Frenchmen, held the fort until the, the Irish support got back and the Irish the Ireland have turned the ball over. And we have an injury here too with O'Shea, who took an earlier knock. And uh, whilst we're watching this replay, there was in Tamak. Oh, that was a fine tackle, head-on by O'Shea, that brought this uh, injury problem for him, but certainly saved what would have been a certain try if Tamak had got hold of it. But injuries too for Castagnier. Remember, I mentioned he had had a shoulder operation last summer. And he's restored now, though. Just looking a little tentative as he faces the next onslaught, which will come from McGuinness. And it was Castagnier who uh, elbowed his opposite number, slightly smaller, Connor McGuinness, quite forcibly. We've played nearly three minutes of injury time at the end of this first half. And here at Lansdowne Road, it's Ireland 6, France 0. Two Humphreys penalties, it could have been three more. Ibanez, France's captain. Carboneau, Castagnet. Behind Bishop. Has O'Shea in support. Did he stay inside the 22? Well, it's still in field anyway. Back goes Yevremont. Oh. And unfortunately, Ireland won't be able to capitalise on that little bit of rolling ball luck because the half-time whistle goes with Ireland leading six points to nil against the country they haven't beaten since 1983. Will that be enough? It's a tantalising prospect for them and a worrying one for France as they bid for a third Grand Slam. 4.15 but the second half at Lansdowne Road just about to get underway and the Irish need to build themselves up for this second half certainly not I'm sure but they're leading France by six points to nil as we rejoin Philip Matthews and Nigel Starmer Smith Thank you Steve well uh, while you've been away we've had the European Cup paraded here and the presence on the field of members of the Ireland team who in 1949 won the Triple Crown in Championship for the second time in a row so the crowd will have been in lifted will Ireland accordingly be inspired. They lead six points to nil as the rain still falls here, but that won't dampen spirits. Ireland, it is then, with the initiative, starting the second half through Humphreys. Pelouse on his own 22. Remember last year in Paris, it was France leading seven points to six. A tough encounter, that one. So nearly the biggest upset of so many years. Can Ireland this time be on the right side of the scoreline at the end? We've got a replacement on for France. Uh, Sylvain Marconnet has come on at the front. And he's replacing uh, Christian Califano, who was certainly an injury doubt before this game got underway and was uh, carrying a suspected injury in the leg. Ireland come away with it. Henderson's done well since coming on for the equally abrasive Jonathan Bell. Ireland ball. Wood opts to switch to the open side. It works well. Miller takes it on, makes it available well. Quick flip pass by Wood is excellent. So too Wallace. This is a good start by Ireland. McGuinness. Eric Miller. Bit of a loose pass though. Don't want these on a day like this especially. Greasy ball. O'Shea has done well to stay on his feet. And finally, a scrummage, and it'll be Ireland's put in. Well, the rain's now really coming down fiercely, which will, uh, I guess, not make conditions any worse than they were earlier. Absolutely, and, and that wind is blowing in, in Ireland's faces. It's not particularly big, but it is filling the flags at the end of the stadium, so it's certainly going to be to France's advantage. Ireland ball, off goes Costello. Made the half gap, still well laid back. Ireland composed here, Humphreys, switch with Henderson, gets away, Henderson on to Max, Max long feed, this time Dempsey, Dempsey enveloped by Ntomak 
and by Bernard Sall. 12 metres out, but it did go forward. It will be Francis put into the scrum. Yes, it'll be Francis put in, but I've been very impressed with Rob Henderson since he's come on. He's just as abrasive as Jonathan Bell, but I, I just detect he's got that little bit more sharpness, a little bit quicker uptake in terms of pace. He gets into his stride a bit quicker, and that is key at international level. Yeah, Rob Henderson having a pretty well a full game and uh, expected to be in action tomorrow afternoon, incidentally. Watts versus Bath, they'll be playing in that club match, which you'll be able to see the highlights of on the BBC2 grandstand tomorrow afternoon. I hope Henderson's fit to take part. If they win, he may not recover. <laughs> There'll be some celebration if they do. Ireland just over the halfway. Costello. Guinness Humphreys did it quickly and well. Eric Miller, good pick up by Bernard Sal. Philippe Bernard Sal. Seven tries for France, Bernard Sall scored against Ireland last year. Two tries against Scotland, another against England. But really has had little chance, which is indicative really of the way that Ireland have closed them down so effectively to this point. Looks as there may be a blood injury here for uh, Paul Wallace. Attention. An experienced unit this of Wallace, Wood and Clarcy. Seem to be holding up very well too. We've seen Califano off the pitch already. Down it goes again. Remember, France have been penalised a couple of times for the collapse. It's an area where Ireland seem to be doing well. It is, but if you just look at the feet there, they're, they're digging up this side of the side of, of the pitch, which is very, very thin and sandy, so it's not providing much good for either front row at the moment. And referee Peter Marshall is not happy that the, uh, the blood has dried up sufficiently so they will wait for the front row to receive attention and I think uh, the referee would like a temporary replacement to come on and that would be Justin Fitzpatrick who was last in action against South Africa here back at the tail end of November no mean replacement the man from Dungannon and Ulster This time it's in. Pick the cost of the line. Off he goes. Attempted scrag by Benetton, but good ground made by Costello. Humphreys picked that up off the deck brilliantly, but it uh, created trouble. He had to check. And again, a low pass from McGuinness, not making life easy for the men outside. But they're still going forward, Ireland, and still in possession. Half chance there, Matt Miller in support of McGuinness. Once again, McGuinness, Humphreys this time, not much outside, but inside is O'Quinnigan. Pops it up well. Henderson, caught on the kick, off goes Clarcy, ever closer. 15 metres out, rebounded off a French player who's offside. It's a penalty to Ireland and well-deserved. Well-deserved penalty, but it could so easily have been more than that. A try, the try line was beckoning in if Ireland could have got that ball out wide, but much more constructive from them. Good to see the loose forwards getting in amongst them, and also again Rob Henderson to the fore. Yes, the uh, work of Victor Costello has impressed me immensely this afternoon. The only one of the back row who was in action in this game in Paris last year. And Paul Wallace is back on the field for... Justin Fitzpatrick as Humphreys prepares to increase the lead to 9-0. That's what it is now. And that becomes a useful lead. It takes Ireland at least two scores clear. 9-0. And how will France react? We've always known temperament, concentration has been a problem for Ireland for uh, the French and now they are under real pressure and that's not the first uh, kick off that's been fielded poorly by Ireland, a little bit of indecision again the Castagnette kick into no man's land low 
bit of indecision on the behalf of Wood and ultimately Costello leading to the knock-on. It's a penalty to France, offside by Ireland, O'Quinnigan, the man singled out. Interesting decision to be made by Ibanez here, and it looks as though they're uh, in the modern style. They will go for the line-out, tapped into touch by Castaned. Doesn't look his normal, bouncy, effervescent self, does Castaned. It's been a tough afternoon for him so far. Been operating with uh, quite a lot of slow ball. He's been closed down fast. But can France come back here? Olivier Magne. And that's careless. Advantage to Ireland. They'll get the scrummage if they don't get any advantage here for the knock on. And that's what they're going to have now back to the scrummage. Yes, they did well to defend that line. It's always a danger area, but I suppose it. Defences these days are getting so well organised to that to that full lineout, and uh, and France themselves have responded very well early in the first half when when Ireland had that that great position. So if Ireland could break out of that, it'll be a tremendous confidence boost because they really need to up this pace. They can't rely on on always having the upper hand. France have yet to explode, and we all know how quickly they can do it. A lot of uh, tight play, close quarters, and Tamak in there. But Ireland managing to get on the right side. And this is the man who's uh, shone so far, Victor Costello. He really has uh, laid his body on the line. Yes, he's really targeted Thomas Castagnier today, and um, from a big forward's point of view with his bar, he's been able to get out and outside of the, the opposition blind side or open side wing forward and get to Castagnier. And I'm sure Castagnier uh, hasn't been too happy with that all afternoon. In fact, he hasn't been happy at all as we were saying earlier on, that Ireland need to keep that pressure up on him if, they, if they're going to see this, this lead through to the final conclusion. His club mate Trevor Brennan of St Mary's waits, but uh, Costello will continue, will not be replaced. It's a big scrum here, Ireland's put in, and now Ireland give vent to song. McGuinness won't find touch. Knock on advantage Ireland. Wood, what's he doing there? We're not going to ask the same question. Scrum one by Ireland. Well, he was breaking the game line, that's what he was doing there, and one of Keith Wood's more productive runs, because that was a dangerous uh, position to be in. Conor McGuinness electing not to go to touch and give France the attacking line out again, and if they can work themselves out of this, then Ireland will, will do well. And it looks to me as though Costello will need to go off. Uh, the trainers are there in support. Denise Fanagan, Donald O'Shaughnessy. And here's a man who's done outstandingly well so far. This, what, about 11 minutes into the second half. And it will be a testing time for Trevor Brennan, who wins his first cap in the Five Nations. His third in all, the 25-year-old. A big man to replace a big man, six feet five, 16 stone. And off goes Costello to a very big round of sympathetic applause. He's played his part. Can Brennan now replace him in like kind? McGuinness, nice break. Gives Ireland the initiative over the 10 meter line. Off goes Wood. Takes out Bruze. Bruising tackle too. Miller, good acceleration, still with possession Ireland's way, over the halfway, Humphreys, looks for the big miss move, O'Shea, a bit static, Henderson, rolling over on the right side to make it available, but he's not, in fact, well that seemed a trifle harsh, I didn't think Mags had actually, I thought he was still on his feet, as <laughs> Brennan takes on the first opponent, Makes his mark early, but it's going to be a penalty to France on the halfway. 
Well, that's one thing Trevor Brennan will have to watch. He is a fairly abrasive personality, to say the least, and, uh, uh, and the French are probably the best at getting that out of you, so that's one thing that he should he's gonna have to keep his mind on the next few minutes as, as France find, a, find the touch. Out on the floor, beyond yeah, the 22. It went way out over the dead ball line in the end. Disquiet in French ranks. And Ireland will try and capitalise on their temperamental vagaries. Well, there's no doubting who's been ruling the roost since half time, but there's going to be words here with Clossy. Pulled to one side by referee Peter Marshall. Paddy Johns wants to know why. And it's a penalty. Well, a little bit of uh, indiscipline by Ireland this time. Peter Clossy has had his moments too. In a, in a charismatic career, one might say. <laughs> you could say that. The, um, the indistinguished... Um, <laughs> label of being the last Irish player to be sent off in an international so yeah, he certainly needs to get a hold of himself now for the remainder of this game yeah, two years ago against France indeed Clossy got his marching orders so he needs to quieten it down three years indeed in uh, Paris so it's France that have possession Castagnette Not 10, France. Warren Gatland in the middle between uh, Philip Danaher and Donald Lenehan. Lenehan, the manager with the smile on his face as Ireland continue to lead 9-0. 14 minutes, we've now played in the second half. The rain pours down, the ball too on France. Franck Tuner turns. And Keith Wood has a, a personal contretemps with Philippe Benetton. No doubting that, and I think uh, there could be serious trouble here. Well, we've got one of the most experienced referees on the world on the touchline, and we can't have failed. Jim Fleming can't have failed to see what happened there. Well, it was, I'd have said, as blatant as can be. You'll see now, there's the initial impact of Keith Wood, who's hurled to the ground. Up goes Benetton, in goes the punch, and I would have thought marching orders. Well, if, if, if these three can't sort it out, nobody can. It looks obvious that Keith Wood seems to be quite hurt there. What seemed like a fairly, it was a fairly robust challenge, all right, to say the least. Um, it all depends on how Jim Fleming read that situation. Jim Fleming, the touch set on this near side from Scotland. Peter Marshall. And uh, Philippe Bernard Salle is being given the yellow card. Well, I'm afraid that surely is misidentification. Uh, total. I mean, it, you have I to mean, say that maybe evidence of video playback would have sorted that situation out very quickly because from us sitting up here, it was, it was clear well, as no day question, exactly what no happened. No question at all. I just think, I mean, Bernard, uh, Bernard Salle says, uh, what, me? I mean, I don't think he's involved. Anyway, a yellow card for the luckless winger. No doubt about who this was. And no doubt about what he did either. But he's still on the field and untainted. Play resumes after that flurry. And Ireland sitting on a 9-0 lead. And this is the kind of grinding down and war of attrition that France did not want to get involved in. It has to be said though, Nigel, I've, I've been a little bit disappointed from a French perspective. There hasn't been an awful lot from this French side, has there? That Ireland have closed them down well, but they haven't looked to their forwards and they haven't, they haven't struggled through that period. They've lacked fluency throughout. And if this man doesn't operate so well, then the team doesn't either as a whole. And that's Castagnier. He misses the touch that he was looking for. Back goes Conor O'Shea. Well, not much uh, chance of breaking away from that triangular attack of tacklers but Ireland still retain possession Humphreys back in the 22 just floated that one safely out 
Yeah, Humphrey's touch kicking has been excellent all day. He's been spot on. And for such a, a relatively slight man, he's certainly got a big boot on him. That ball coming into what is now a slightly stiffening breeze. And it's certainly likely, if anything, to, to get up for the remainder of the half. Well, it's a key element of concentration now. Conviction, but not over-anticipation. They've got to keep France at full stretch. And not concede penalty opportunities, not give away easy ball. Continuing the way to drive on up front as they're doing now. Tie them in. Here's Humphreys. That's a rebound. Unlucky. Off goes Magne. Magne followed by Lee Flamont. It's a race now. Across comes Bishop. Bishop's got the speed. Lee Flamont with the tackle. Ireland scurry back. France attack. Ten metres out. They've done well, but it's charged down. Off uh, McGuinness. A Quinnigan to the rescue. Three metres from Ireland's line. Humphreys, last line of defence. And secure again as he was here last week for Ulster. Well, that was wonderful last gas defence by Ireland. Two times they had to get back and recover, from, particularly from Conor McGuinness's charge down kick. Leave Ramal taking the ball forward. He's not raising on the wing, the wing for most of this game. Justin Bishop does very well to get back, turns, presents the ball. The support is there. And it looks like Combas charged the kick down. And who gets back again? But a Quinnigan. Very, defen very impressive defensive work. He's had a great game so far. Diana Quinnigan, first game in the Five Nations. A man who came through via Western Province and Stellenbosch University in South Africa. But of Irish ancestry, legitimately enough. But it's France attacking again, keeping it close. Trying to build up some momentum, trying to build up a pattern. Flip pass inside is effective. Good drive on by Lombard. And France in uh, striking distance now, 10 metres out. Frustrated again. And you can see the rain is heavy now. But not dampening the intensity of this encounter. In the wars again is Keith Wood. Yeah, and here France taking on a close quarters, which and many I would have felt certainly before the selection of this game. Benetton is really only on because he's injured, but the France might have come to, to Dublin with a, a, a more physical back row and, and really taken on Ireland up front, which they're only now starting to do. Keith Wood, former captain, captain against France in '98. Good chance here for. France who still look for their first points in control of the scrummage Ireland wheel it round the referee plays on for a little bit but then realises that it's a penalty in fact that's been awarded for deliberately turning it So, wait for the charge from Carboneau through Dort. The set-up midfield, trying to roll it to one side. They've still got the momentum, they're over the line. The referee looks, can he see? It's given the try. The try for France is given. And there's sort of mayhem breaks out. But certainly a try has been awarded in that tangle of bodies on the floor. And I think it's Dort who's awarded it. Richard Dort, who was the man who took the first uh, pirouette pass. And so, unsurprisingly in a way, France have fought their way back into this contest with their first points of the afternoon. Let's watch now. We've played 21 minutes. This was the build-up. Durs in the middle there, but the rest of the French forwards get there in time and just manage to take it over. And it has to be said, Ireland didn't seem particularly happy about that. Peter Claus in particular. And with the conversion from Castagnier, it's nine points to seven. And now it will be a bubbling cauldron out there. It certainly will, because we all know and France now feel that they're back in, play themselves back into this game. Their tails are certain to be up, and that's when they're at their most dangerous. A 
and the referee absolutely certain of the score it looked reasonable enough to so that will have uh, lifted the morale of France which might have been sagging and accordingly a huge touchline find from Castagnier into the last quarter then well there are no faint hearts out there but they'll need tremendous concentration self-discipline now Justin Fitzpatrick is uh, poised on the touchline to come on as replacement and Clarcy is to be replaced by Fitzpatrick who comes on and already been on as a, a blood injury replacement off goes Clarcy so Ireland bolster their pack with a fresh pair of legs in the front row nine points to seven Ireland's three penalties to France's converted try Carboneau this is the French replacement Sylvain Marconnet good work by Humphreys he's rescued possession Trevor Brennan drives sets it up on Ireland's 22 O'Shea screws it away well That was a fabulous kick by Conor O'Shea, showing the advantage of that cultured left boot, exactly what was needed. The breeze is stiffening, and that was, that was a very good clearance. Perfect spiral on that kick, which it needed to carry the distance. So another newcomer to Five Nations rugby, Fitzpatrick, has earned his spurs, as we saw in the contest against South Africa here before Christmas. Meanwhile, Thomas Vieux Vermont. Castagnac into the heavens O'Shea with support from Dempsey and Mark called and given uh, the correct tactics from Castagnac there and indeed Castagnac taking a leaf out of David Humphrey's books that really, this really is perfect conditions for the Gary Owen game it'd be a wonderful day at Toman Park wouldn't it <laughs> in the pouring rain as we now have the breeze as well but it's not kept held hold of by Eric Miller France repossessed they're dangerous now tails up such big incentives for both these teams and Tamak comes up a rare occasion that well this period is going to require a lot of discipline from this Irish pack now because that this breeze is really stiffening up France seem to have a little bit of a hold on them in, in terms of territory. Ireland really need to fight their way out of this and, and start playing more of the game in the opposition 22 just to 10 yard area, or else France can, can only but score. You, you just get that feeling. Inside the Ireland 22. With Lievremont on the short side. Ireland a little slow to regroup and get behind the ball and the man. France trudge forward. Castagnier, Dort, still with France, Carboneau, Lombard, ever closer, about eight metres out now, and with another put into a scrum. Well, there was a time you'd have said these were perfect conditions for Irish rugby, but not anymore. I think it's actually suiting the French. The French would be more than happy to sit here and, and maintain that ball to keep the continuity going through their forwards. That's a very, very sapping thing to have to defend. An experienced United pack that seems in these last ten minutes to have really come together. The collapse scrum this time is by Ireland. A penalty to France, six metres out. Testing times. We've 14 minutes to play. Well, there was a time when you'd uh, have no doubt in bringing up your place kicker to, to uh, earn a one-point lead, but I sense not. It'll be the line-out because Castagnier's aiming for the corner. I'm not sure what Tournaire is doing. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice touch. Just a reminder, 
Castagnier where the corner flag is. And the referee says, wait, he wants it taken again. Ireland regroup on their own goal line. That's an inter interesting tag. Castagnet does not want it too close to the goal line because then the Irish backs will be able to come up and help defend that line-out. He wants it sufficient so that there is a bit of space between the line-out and the try line so that France can gain some momentum. Tense moment sees. Thierry Cleda is waiting to come on his replacement. But not interrupt this line out now with Pelouse, the front man, Bruze in the middle. Pelouse takes, they come round. Ireland formed the wedge in counter. The ball is there. A knock on, surely, by Carboneau. It is. And that was greeted by as big a cheer as if Ireland had scored. Yes, and uh, I think an applause of relief as much as anything else. You can almost hear the size. McGuinness. That's the corner flag just behind. Carboneau trying to tap tackle him. That's drifted in field in the wind. A knock on, though. It's going to be uh, Ireland conceding a scrummage pudding. The tension... Now, evidence, Gatland there on the left, Lenehan on the right, and here's Thierry Cleda, who remarkably was a replacement in all four of the Grand Slam internationals France played last season. He comes on now to win his eighth cap. And from Pau is Fabian Palouz, has done his bit for the day. substitutions, not injuries, Scrummage collapse. Still deep inside the RN22. The tension mounts with every passing minute. Ireland looking for a first win against France in 16 years. Still lead 9-7. Think how they led in Paris and were denied at Stade de France last year. And then lost at the death. It's another put into France. 11 minutes to go. Well, errors are plenty, unsurprisingly, in these conditions. France certainly haven't been uh, their fluent best by, um, by many a minor. It's the 22. Carbono leaving it to his back row. Thomas Lievremont has it at his feet. It's 90 degrees round. It's hard to exaggerate just what a victory to Ireland would mean today. It's 10 years since they won the opening match in the Five Nations Championship, let alone beat France. Pushed through by Carboneau. Lombard is in touch. And it's going to be Ireland's throw-in. That's important. Very important that Ireland have the throws the same, Nigel, but it's very, very difficult to see what they can do with, them, with the throw in terms of getting themselves out of the situation. What they won't want to do is just uh, France another attacking line out, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the, the Gary Owen being used again just in behind the French three quarters, somewhere up around the middle of the park. Keith Wood. The chant rises to the heavens again as Wood prepares. Paddy Johns, secure. McGuinness, still in play. It's a good follow-up by Bishop, I think. Over the 22 now. A rather healthier situation for Ireland. They've withstood that persistent pressure. Up again from McGuinness. It's a good tactic in these conditions. Bounces anyone's ball. Ireland have it. Yeah. A put into Ireland for a knock on. Yes, and you can just see Conor McGuinness using the wind. If you, if you remember, we said in the first half, he had a bit of the wind behind him, and his, his box kicks were going too long. No such, no such case this half with the wind against him. It's just holding those kicks up nicely. Counting down to eight minutes to go, plus whatever injury time is to be added on. Ireland up towards the halfway, and again, it's a good move. McGuinness for the third time. Possession regained. 
Humphreys. Switch across with Mags. It's just an untidy though, and it's gone back to France. Away by Benetton, Castagnier. There's no one back there till Miller gets deep into the 22. He's got to kick it. And well played off his left foot. Well, Eric Miller showing all his Gaelic football expertise to get that one into the touch, into the breeze and off his left peg as well. That's what it is, the man who came out of Wesley College and returned to Ireland this season to Terenure after time with Leicester. And we have a stoppage with Justin Fitzpatrick requiring some attention. The line out is on Ireland's 10 metre line. Ireland 9, France 7. Can they retain their discipline, their commitment? Have they still the energy in this great battle up front that there's been? A real war of attrition, but the Grand Slam pack of two seasons is being held. And so far, Ireland still lead. And Tamak, so little we've seen of him today. But did enough to get the ball to ground and win the put-in to France. Trevor Brennan first up in that wave of attack and he managed to turn it. Emile and Tamak very well but with the momentum that France had going into that they retained possession away by Lier from and Tamak very close to a forward pass Olivier Magnin knocks on and again the Irish crowd breathe another sigh of relief I think to do everybody to do, Ireland really need to get out of this situation and again Conor McGuinness Gary Owen back row falling on retaining possession looks like the only option from this position well, nigh on 50,000 have screamed themselves hoarse. Very largely the Irish contingent. What heroes these men will be, but a nasty moment again. But is it offside? Benetton, yeah. Charged down the kick of McGuinness, but was offside on the fringe. Well, that's a significant break. A very significant break. That gives David Humphreys at least, or Conor O'Shea, with his left foot, some chance to gain a little bit more territory, get the line and get start playing more of this game in the French half. Well, it was here a week ago that the whole of Lansdowne Road was on its feet, literally clapping, cheering, in the certain knowledge that with five minutes to go, Ulster had won the European Cup. No one dare, I think, move into that mode just yet because there's nothing certain with a margin of lead of only two points. Taken by Davidson. Keith Wood in safer territory now. The graft up front. Carbono. Castagnier, is there a moment of magic left from him? Diagonally crossfield. Conor O'Shea has time and common sense. Just pins France back again. The line out inside the French half. It's in sight now. The crowd know it. The players know there's plenty of time for things to change. If they don't retain their total concentration and discipline about four minutes Ireland nine France seven down to Carboneau Castagnier Dort trying to run through a brick door tackled by Humphreys stolen though by Miller but a late tackle adjudged by Peter Marshall It's so important that Ireland keep their discipline. They can't afford to give kickable penalty uh, opportunities to Castagnier. Doesn't matter that he's not the most accurate place kick in the world. They just can't afford to do that. Trevor Brennan, the replacement, gets a yellow card for a late tackle. It must have been so late because it uh, 
was some way away from the ball, wasn't it, which we were following. That has been a little bit of a criticism one might have had of Trevor Brennan over the years, it is that discipline factor. He is, in, in fairness to him, very eager to make the hits, and he is a big tackle merchant, but he needs to slow it down a bit. Well, I mentioned, would there be a moment of magic from Castagnard? He knows that time is running out, there's about three minutes to go, and he has the chance to give Ireland the lead for the first time with this penalty goal attempt from a metre inside his own half. This would be quite remarkable from the man who scored 138 points for France in 15 internationals. This for the lead if he gets it. He struck it superbly well, but it's going wide. Cheers of relief resound around Lansdowne Road. It stays Ireland 9, France 7. But they're not out of the woods yet. Should, should uh, France manage to maintain possession here? What bet the drop goal attempt from Castagnet? An important drop goal, a good uh, drop kick, a good one too. Ireland untidy though, on reception. It's advantage France here. Castagnet, Ibanez the captain, down by O'Quinnigan. Tackled by Wallace, is he offside? It can't be appeal the Ireland players, it is says Peter Marshall, the man who matters. And this is a far, far easier opportunity now for France to steal it at the death. Is it going to be heartbreak once again for Ireland? As Castagnier tells referee Marshall he's going for goal. Well, and Ireland's anxious to close that down. It looks like they've put a foot offside. So, Paul Wallace given as offside and so dramatically with just over a minute to play this could give France the lead and perhaps the match Thomas Castagnier 24 year old it's all on his shoulders he strokes it through the middle 10 points to 9 he knows the significance of that moment punches the air and that was it we are now down to 40 minutes played of this second half and for the first time in the match France have the lead it's cruelty personified for Ireland and as we come into the dying moments the commentators here have agreed that the man of the match, the Lloyds TSB man of the match, is Rob Henderson. But it's not over yet. Wallace, can Ireland come back from imminent heartbreak? They have a penalty chance. This could be the coup de grace. Well, I don't know if my, my heart rate can take, can take this, all this. But I mean, Ireland really did well to get up there, to get that position. Paul Wallace taking the ball on, and now it's down to David Humphreys, which should be a fairly straightforward in, in normal circumstances. It's on the right side of the field for him, being a right-sided right -sided kicker, but yet those posts must seem very, very narrow to him now. He's kicked three this afternoon, but if this one goes over, he will not only be a, a hero of Ulster, he will be a hero of Ireland for all time. We've played more than half a minute of injury time. This surely for the victory. Ireland 9, France 10, this is Humphreys. It's drifted to the right. It's drifted away, it's missed. He throws the kicking tee away disconsolately. And France have a 22 dropout. Whatever happened to Irish luck. France 10, Ireland 9. Well, I think there might be a little bit less than luck in it. We did say before the game that maybe selection of, of David Humphreys as place kicker, having not kicked through Ulster's interprovincial campaign or in European Championship campaign, might be a bit of a risk. Well, a very obvious, sensible restart by Castagnier. Puts it as long as he can. Ireland have just got to get within kicking range, drop goal range. Range of some sort of points. They have a penalty here, but that's on Ireland's 10-metre line. We've played a minute and a half of injury time. It's Humphreys. Ireland break out with Keith Wood. Wood still goes, the Ireland forwards are there, they've still got energy, they've still got reserves, they're still determined to turn it back. 
Trevor Brennan goes on. Ireland release it again. Eric Miller chips over the back. Can he regain possession? And Tamak kicks out. And the referee blows the final whistle. France are jubilant. Surely they can scarce believe their good fortune because they've turned round what looked like imminent defeat into last gasp victory. Thanks to Thomas Castagnet and that penalty goal. And there must be heartbreak. There's surely tears for Ireland. So close in Stade de France a year ago. And today, having led for 80 minutes, they concede defeat once again in this sequence that goes back to 1983 here in Dublin. A bold, brave Irish performance. But in the end, the frustration, the disappointment of a game that surely seemed won, and even in injury time could yet have been won, turns into defeat by a single point. Philip Matthews. Yeah, I, I'm almost, uh, I just can't believe, I can't believe that Ireland didn't hang on to there. They really must have been their best opportunity of all uh, over the last number of years to, to, to finally overcome this, um, this French side. Um, they'll be very, very disappointed. There's no question about that. It's, it's, um, what can you say? Well, I guess the picture of the Ireland players at the final whistle said it all. The picture, too, of the French, you know, they got off the hook. Can't really say they were let off the hook. They did sort of mount a tremendous rearguard action.